fluffy, scruffy, and closely resemble a rodent, though are actually more related to rabbits. The American pika is a mammal that lives in rock fields and mountainous grassland above the tree line near here in BC. They're the subject of new research out of UBC Okanagan. More specifically, their poop. Our Darius Madavi joins us now to explain why. So, Darius, clear something up for us. We've heard pika, we've heard pika. What's the correct pronunciation? Well, it really depends who you ask. Uh, if you ask me, pika, mm -hmm. okay. which is why I put the pronunciation guide in your prompter to say pika. <laughs> Thanks uh, for that. Yeah, you're welcome. But uh, our producer, Matthew, insists that it is pika, and so uh, I asked the researcher that I spoke with. She says pika. All the people I know in research say pika, but uh, I think many Canadians do say pika. So, you know, it depends who you ask. Uh, but. I'm going to go with pika for this, uh, this, this piece, mm -hmm. and uh, let's talk about the pika, because they are found through many of BC's mountain ranges in BC and Alberta, as well as through much of the states. Uh, this is the American pika's range. They are not listed as endangered, but they are declining, and they are uh, widely recognized among biologists as one of the uh, most severely declining species, one that we need to really be keeping an eye on, not just for the sake of the pikas themselves, which typically, as you said, live in mountainous areas, uh, which means that as the climate continues to warm, they don't really have many places to move. They can continue to move higher in elevation, which is what we've seen, is what they're doing. Uh, but beyond that, they can't really move to other mountains without descending and climbing up in the mountain, not that they'd know to do that. Uh, it's a really precarious situation for them as they experience these rain shifts that all species are doing uh, currently because of climate change. So they're in a particularly bad spot, but that also means that by keeping an eye on them, we can learn a lot about other species, which is what I learned from Kate Arpin, who is a researcher at UBC Okanagan. American pikas are known as an indicator species. So by studying population characteristics, you can hope to get an indication of how um, environmental change might be impacting their ecosystem and therefore the environment that they live in. So Darius, keeping track of pikas important. How do we do that? So right now, current methods involve uh, just doing occupancy surveys. So going to the range, uh, the range of the pika, seeing where we can find them, where they're known to, uh, to live, looking for things like their poop, their scat. Uh, but future methods could be a lot more explanatory. They could tell us a lot more about the species as a whole. So uh, by using genotyping, we can actually look at the genes that make up the pikas. We can learn a lot about the individuals and the, uh, the population as a whole. And part of the reason that this is so powerful is through eDNA, the ability to collect DNA from the environment. Uh, here is what uh, Kate had to say about that. The genetic monitoring tool was developed to um, include genetic markers that can look at uh, a wide variety of different population characteristics, ranging from, for instance, differentiating between uh, different individuals and looking at broad scale patterns of connectivity. So working with uh, researchers from Parks Canada, like Tony Einfeld, who created, uh, made those beautiful pictures we saw earlier, mm -hmm. and to Michael Russell, her uh, our supervisor, they've created a new genomic tool that will allow us to collect DNA from uh, tissue samples or even the scat in the environment and learn a lot about these species as a whole, not and only the individuals, but the population as well. And what goes into this kind of research? A lot of uh, work has to be done, collecting the SCAT samples, learning a lot about how the tool can be implemented. Right now, it works extremely well on uh, uh, specific tissue samples, but when it comes to SCAT, there is a high uh, uh, return rate, but the error is also quite high, so more work needs to be done. But there's a lot of work in the lab and the fields that goes into this. Here's what Kate had to say about her favorite parts. Oh, I love being out in the field. Um, to actually be able to be there and see um, the study species and see the study area in the area that ultimately you're working towards um, better understanding and uh, hopefully in the future better, you know, protecting. Um, it's just such a such a wonderful, almost like humbling experience to be able to be there and see it. Um, and I was very grateful for Parks Canada to, to allow me to come tag along and um, actually, yeah, see the areas that I've been studying um, for yeah, the last two years. So this is some incredibly uh, promising research, and as the, it continues, uh, we're looking forward to seeing more applications of environmental DNA and these sort of genomic tools that have been used for pikas, uh, polar bears, and various other species. The whole gamut. Darius Madavi, thanks very much. Thank you.